All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit with another update on the Fannie Willis <clears throat> Fulton County debacle. Uh, Nathan Wade has resigned only hours after the judge's ruling. So let me give you my take on this. It's too much, too little, and too late. He should have let Fanny fire him. Him resigning is an admission to wrongdoing. Who resigns from their job when they've done nothing wrong? He should have made her fire him. So with that being said, maybe he thinks that by him resigning, the heat will be off him. But I don't understand how these people in Fulton County are, are attorneys. Because now that he's resigned and Fannie goes forward, guess what Nathan got coming? Subpoenas. More subpoenas. Because the more she proceeds to go after Trump and not resign herself, they're going to pull him back in court. And he's going to answer for the perjury, the money, and all the other allegations. Because, you know, Fanny was talking about him bad for a minute. So we don't know what's the deal with their relationship. She was talking about, you know, he had a condition to where, you know, he couldn't have sex with her or nothing. So she did emasculate him. But when it comes to his decision to resign at this late hour, if that was the case, you should have resigned when they first said that it was a conflict of interest. Why did you wait this long to resign if you doing it for the best interest of justice? So, is Nathan about to tell on Fanny to save himself? Or is He's so chivalrous and so loyal and so interested in justice that he really wants us to believe he's doing the right thing. The right thing would have been to never hide the money from your wife. And a lot of things you did would have never let it get this far. To resign at this late hour as if they're going to leave you alone if Fanny continues to pursue Trump. First of all, Nathan, you know Tim Bradley testified that y'all covered up a SA assault case. All y'all lawyers knew that a woman had been assaulted and nobody reported it. Your best idea was to give her money and $20,000 and then to allow it to be exposed through Fannie when she threw Bradley under the bus. Resigning at this, that, that resignation is hollow. Fanny was going to fire you anyway, just so she could continue. And you trying to get off the bus at this late hour is not going to help you. Y'all took the stand and did so much lying and so much self-incriminating of each other. Your resignation only means that you don't have income. That's all it means. They will be giving you subpoenas. You will be back in court. You and Tim Bradley, y'all will be sued. 
as long as Fannie holds on to this case. Because at the end of the road for Fannie, it's probably disbarment, and she's lucky if she don't go to jail. And I know it's a sad affair. I don't I don't know if you all are really good people or not. You know, and there's no real animus that I have for you. I'm just wondering why you just didn't get off the case when they told you it was a conflict of interest and it first started. Why did you wait until the judge gave Fannie an ultimatum? Because you know what Fannie is going to do. Fannie is going to try to work her black girl magic and continue. Because the worst she feels she can get is probation or I don't know. But as far as actually getting to prosecute Trump, that's not going to happen when their judge has already ruled there was impropriety and already told you and her that one of y'all had to go, which means there are automatic grounds for appeal if Fanny stays on the case. Automatically. If, she, if Fanny stays on the case, after all these other court proceedings, there's grounds for appeal. So, this was very, this was a late hour. Why did you resign after the judge's ruling? I can't believe that y'all are actually lawyers. Either you gonna, you gonna have to tell on Fanny, or she's going to tell on you because this bus done left the station at this point. People want to know where the money is, where the money came from, what's going on in that jail. There's too much you left in the air. You should have made Fanny fire. You should have wanted to let her fire you because at this point, Fanny is definitely going to throw you under the bus. Or you already under the bus. These are just my thoughts on him resigning. It's too late. Your resigning now is an admission of guilt. It's an admission that you've done something wrong. Why are you resigning? Why are you not challenging the judge? Why are you not appealing that? It's a lot of questions up in the air. But it's a long way to November and a whole lot more court proceedings and a whole lot more testimony is coming. You see how they squoze Tim Bradley and Tim Bradley was being questioned about you committing perjury? I just wonder. Nathan, is you really going to go to jail over this? Because people want to know, where's your work product for $700,000? $700,000, there should be a lot of work product for all those billable hours. You can't have no one motion and no one brief. They want to see $700,000 worth of work that you did on that case. And if you can't show that, and you're unwilling to testify and tell exactly when y'all started that relationship, that's going to be very problematic for you guys. But that's just my opinion. You can put your opinions in the comments. In the meantime, let me show you what the news is saying. This is CNN. And no, they bias. You know, CNN, that's Democratic. But we're going to see what they say. And this is for fair use under the 1976 Copyright Act for commentary and educational purposes. Let's check it out. As we have been expecting all afternoon since Judge Scott McAfee issued his ruling regarding uh, District Attorney Fonnie Willis uh, and her ability to stay on the case prosecuting 
Donald Trump and his co-defendants for trying to overturn the 2020 election. We've just learned that Nathan Wade, the lead prosecutor in that case, has stepped down after this scathing ruling by Judge McAfee. And we've obtained a copy of the letter that Wade wrote to District Attorney Fonnie Willis tending his resignation. The very first sentence, quote, the furtherance of the rule of law and democracy is and has always been the North Star of our combined efforts in this prosecution. Clearly here, Wade taking the step of resigning in part because he had no other choice. We have a team of reporters and analysts looking uh, at this story. Now we want to go to CNN's Nick Valencia. CNN is even throwing him under the bus. They said he resigned only when he had no choice. What does that mean? He didn't have a choice. So there's no honor in resigning. He had plenty of opportunities to resign. He had plenty of opportunities to get out the way. They went through all those proceedings, all that testimony, all those court appearances for you to resign when the judge gives her an ultimatum. Man, it is too late. You should have allowed her to fire you or let her make a decision, or maybe she's made one, or maybe you know what her decision is. This is too much too late. Where is that $700,000 worth of work product? What did you actually do to earn $700,000? To earn more than the President of the United States? To earn more than the Attorney General of the United States? You made more money as a prosecutor in Fulton County, Georgia, than any other elected official in the country. Think about that. He made more money than any elected official in the country. And now he resigns. Nathan, you think they're not coming for that money? You think they still don't want to know when y'all started that relationship? You still think that covering up what Bradley did in that office. I guess you didn't have a choice. You risked your career for the Democratic Party. Who wasn't going who have not said a word in your defense. Let's continue to listen. Live for us in Fulton County. Uh, Nick, uh, the letter here essentially outlining that he's proud of the work that he's done for Fonnie Willis, uh, but that it's clear, uh, according to Judge McAfee, that he needs to step away. The people want to know, we the people want to know, we want to see $700,000 worth of work product, briefs, motions. We want to know how did you earn $700,000? $1,000. Well, Boris, it's official. Nathan Wade is out as the special prosecutor in the criminal case involving the former president and some of his closest allies. I'm looking here at that resignation letter from the Wade Campbell Law Firm addressed to the Honorable Fonnie Willis. You read part of that, and I'm going to read a little bit more here. It says, although the court found that the defendants failed to meet their burden of proving that the DA acquired an actual conflict of interest, I'm offering my resignation in the interest of democracy and dedication to the American public and to move this case forward as quickly as possible. It is a very short resignation letter, but it does add at the end of it that he wishes the, the, funny, uh, the uh, district attorney's office success and safety through this process. It's something, as you mentioned, that we had been anticipating uh, for you know, all day, really, since we got this ruling. But now, Boris, it is official. That's right. And let's just be clear about what this order had said, right? After the evidentiary hearing, we heard from the, the judge writing uh, in uh, a couple dozen pages here. The court therefore concludes that the prosecution of this case cannot proceed until the state selects one of two options. One, 
seemed very clear. Yeah. It wasn't going to happen. The district attorney may choose to step aside along with the whole of her office and refer the prosecution to the prosecuting attorney's counsel for reassignment, or alternatively, SADA Wade can withdraw. Let's bring in Paula Reed to talk a little bit more about this. We were expecting this. It was really a matter of when. It was a matter of when, and this is a pretty classy letter, right? He tries to bring it back to the idea that the most important thing here is the rule of law and democracy, reminds people that the nature of this case are allegations that people tried to undermine the outcome of the 2020 election. These are grave allegations. And in a pretty tactful way, he also points out the fact that the judge did not find an actual conflict here. They did not find actual corruption or that Fannie Willis or Nathan Wade engaged in some sort of scheme to financially benefit off of this investigation. He says, quote, the defendants failed to meet their burden of proving that the district attorney acquired an actual conflict of interest. So this is a pretty well done letter. Given all of the circumstances, it brings it back to the facts and the law, because at the heart of this is a criminal case that is mostly intact. They just had six counts dismissed, but we knew this had to happen. And this is a pretty classy way to go given everything that's happened over the past few months. Uh, to your point, he, he redirects the attention away from the question of conflict of interest, which has been settled, away from the controversy surrounding the romantic relationship, and focuses on the question of Donald Trump and his allies allegedly trying to overturn the 2020 election. He, he says that he's offering his resignation in the interest of democracy and dedication to the American people. Uh, we want to go to Norm Eisen, who, who's standing by. Norm. And I'm going to say this every time I talk about this case. He's he talk, talking about in the interest of justice. 19 people died in under a year in the Fulton County Jail while he was a district attorney. 19 people died in that jail. When they were going to Belize and going to Napa Valley and having a grand old time. No, we don't want your resignation. We want you and Fanny together to ride this out all the way until somebody realizes that the 19 people that passed away in your jail, that should be investigated and somebody should be held accountable for that. 19 somebody is responsible for what went on in that dungeon of a jail down in fulton county and i'm not going to ever back up off that he can resign he can separate himself from fanny willis but 19 people died one was even eaten alive by bed bugs so Get off the case all you want. If you're interested in justice, for real, let's deal with that. Let's deal with that first. Because you're not speaking on that. Your reaction to the news that this is now official, that Nathan Wade has stepped aside in the Fulton County prosecution. Transform your dental health with just a simple rub of this blue alga. Imagine saying goodbye to dentist. Uh, Boris, he's doing the right thing here. This relationship was never smart. Um, we've discussed from the start that it likely was not a legal or evidentiary basis for disqualification, uh, but that Wade had to go. That's been clear for many weeks. Now he's done it. I do think it speaks to his commitment. There have been so many false things said about him that he was not a hollow, highly qualified lawyer coming to this case. That's been proven false. That he didn't do a good job on the case. That's not true either. He defeated, with the team he led, some of the best litigators in the country in a series of pretrial skirmishes. He this man here is lying. There's no proof Nathan did anything. We haven't seen him do anything to earn $700,000. But we know CNN is democratic media. Over here, this is the people's media. What did he do in this case to earn more money than a president in the United States? 
the Attorney General of the United States, and every other lawyer in the country. We haven't seen any evidence of any work. So that, don't try that. We're not going to gloss this over. He's trying to save himself, but he waited too late. They knew in the beginning that they had a relationship that should have been reported. They waited too late. Fanny is going to wait to the end because at the, at the end of the road, she's going to say, I'm a woman and this is this. He knows as a man, he has to be held accountable. And he's trying to minimize the blowback by getting out the way now. But clearly, Nathan, you waited too late. At this point, you should have let Fanny fire you. You should have showed some integrity as far as I didn't do anything wrong, so I'm not resigning. It's both of us or nothing. Because in your mind, as a lawyer, you already know getting a conviction on Trump is not going to happen in Fulton County. The judge already said there was the impropriety and all this other stuff. And she tainted the jury pool. What you think the first motion Donald Trump is going to is going to file if he ever has to file a motion? Change of venue. Why he's going to file a motion for change of venue? Fannie Willis tainted the jury pool. What's the judge going to say? No, nope, we're not going to change the venue. Once the judge says that, there's automatic ground for of appeal and it's going to be reversed because with Nathan resigning and all other court proceedings, there's already a tainted case and a tainted jury pool in Fulton County. Let's be real. Come on now, put your thinking caps on, people. There's no way that Donald Trump can get a fair trial in Fulton County after all of this has proceeded the actual prosecution of him. He got four guilty pleas. But once this controversy emerged, he had to go. It's the right thing to do. It's a strong and good order by the judge. I'm glad to see Wade and the DA's office acting fast so we can return to getting this trial scheduled, which is what a majority of the American people would like to see happen. Norm, stay with us as we head back to Atlanta and Nick Valencia, where you, Nick, are tracking a new development. What can you share with us? Well, look, Wade was an instrumental part of this case. He was with Fonnie Willis for 865 days, to be exact, and part of the team that secured 19 indictments, including against the former president, and also four guilty pleas. And now we have our hands on the response from Fonnie Willis to Nathan Wade's resignation letter, and she highlights some of those accomplishments uh, by her lead or former lead prosecutor. I want to read part of this letter here now. It says, quote, I will always remember and will remind everyone that you were brave enough to step forward and take on the investigation and prosecution of the allegations that the defendants in this case engage in a conspiracy to overturn Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Bonnie Willis goes on to say, others who were considered were understandably concerned for the safety of themselves and their families that would arise from their acceptance of your role. You were the one who had the courage to accept the role, even though you did not seek it. Just uh, very quickly, I think this other paragraph that follows up is also important. She says, you are an outstanding advocate. In the 865 days you served on this case, you completed a thorough investigation that required the use of a special purpose grand jury to compel the testimony of witnesses inside and outside of Georgia, including litigating in eight states the District of Columbia and the United States Supreme Court to obtain critical testimony. So a uh, very complimentary letter back by Fonnie Willis to this breaking news that we have here, that Nathan Wade, as we expected, is out as a lead prosecutor in this case. Brianna? Yeah, a, a glowing review of Nathan Wade's work on the case. Nick, uh, please stand by. Yeah. We also have Jen Rogers uh, standing by. And, and Jen, Norm alluded to the idea of how this case now moves forward. So Nathan Wade has tended his resignation what do you think comes next? Well, next they'll continue with the process of trying to get a trial date set and moving towards that trial date. You know, they've been engulfed in this controversy for weeks now, and that's kind of put everything else on the back burner. But Bonnie Willis and her team were looking for initially an August trial date. 
I don't think there's any way that's going to happen. But they're now going to shift their attention to trying to get Judge McAfee back in the, the mode of scheduling them a trial date so that they can move towards it. They can't get a trial date before August. Of course they can't. Fannie will still be answering motions about defamation of character, jury tampering, and all these other motions that will last for the next couple of months. I told y'all what was going to happen. I seen this coming. Like Omar from The Wire, when you shoot at the king, you bet not miss. You can't miss when you shoot at the king. You know, y'all could have railroaded me and got me in jail. But y'all up against MAGA. MAGA happens to be stronger than you guys. More loyal. More dedicated. More serious. So what I'm going to tell you is this. They're going to proceed with the defamation of character against Fannie Willis. They're going to see, they're going to proceed with jury tampering against Fannie Willis. And they won't be finished with that until August. Think about it. She's being sued right and left. So is Nathan way abandoning ship? Because he waited too late. If you were going to resign and you seen all the controversy, you should have did that months ago. Months ago, you should have stepped away. It's too little too late right now. We're not buying it. It's certain. And of course, to the extent that Nathan Wade was going to be involved in those preparations for trial, they'll have to replace him in order to move forward in that way once they get a trial date. Yeah, and she has certainly been admonished in this. Uh, a legal win for her to be clear. She will remain on this case. But uh, some blistering comments from the judge. Do you think that's going to change, Jen, how she proceeds here, it, maybe in, in style or tone? Well, I do hope that she takes to heart some of what the judge said. You know, he criticized her for the unprofessional nature of her testimony. He said that her judgment was poor in this whole thing. So do you see how CNN is giving a compliment on one hand and then taking it back on the other, on the other hand? If the judge had to criticize you about your judgment and the things you did, why is he even allowing you to proceed? If you have bad judgment, bad character, You don't represent the best interests of the people. Everybody needs to pay attention to what's going on in Fulton County. Their corruption is at a whole nother level. I've never seen this type of corruption in a city, in one small city. This is a lot. You know, I, I do hope that she takes those words to heart. There also was some sharp criticism of the church that she gave in this case, uh, including playing the, the race card, suggesting the defendants were playing the race card. So I do hope she carefully reads and absorbs the words of Judge McAfee, who seems to me to have been very reasonable in this ruling, and that she does have that govern her going forward. I mean, this particular controversy is behind her, but the judge even suggested that defendants should file Uh, looks like we have a technical issue, but I will finish the thought for her with Paula Reed. It, it seems like Judge McAfee set the table for a potential gag order against District Attorney Willis. Yeah, and that's pretty shocking because usually prosecutors don't make statements about cases that they're working on. You know, they're not sparring with defense counsel on the witness stand. I mean, the idea that you would have a prosecutor under a gag order, that's pretty extraordinary. But it also speaks to how the judge views her conduct in his. I don't know if you're watching closely enough to see how they really 
are throwing Fanny under the bus. Her conduct, her disrespect of the court, the allegations. Listen what CNN is really saying. I'll be telling my subscribers, look at what they're saying to read between the lines. They throwing her under the bus. CNN is even throwing her under the bus because they already know that when she went to that church, that was jury tampering. That's not going anywhere. You cannot take me to court in 14 County after you have already tainted the whole jury pool in your county by going in the church and live for the world to see and making those allegations you made. No DA does that. So what is CNN really saying? You know, think about what they're saying uh, as it relates to her. In one minute, they act like they are supportive. Oh, it's honorable and this, that, and the other. But on the back end, they're saying, oh, it was a lot of foul stuff that went on. Opinion. He called it, quote, unprofessional. And look, these are pretty classy letters, responses, trying to bring it back to the facts of the case. But another fact is that these two prosecutors chose to have a romantic relationship while they were overseeing the most high profile state level criminal investigation in the land. As the judge said, this was bad judgment. And in an effort to suss out whether this was an actual conflict or an appearance of conflict, the judge even called into question their credibility. This is such a forced error that now casts, as the judge described, a cloud over this case. So the, the way they've handled it today, the judge's order has been, has been really impressive, but their conduct over the past year or so has really put this case not in the, great, the greatest of places. And still an open question as to whether it'll even go before the election. Because all of this prompted a delay. The judge uh, hinted. So even liberal CNN 